Hello and welcome. My name is Yves Sanford, VCDX number 203 and CEO of the Comdivision Group. You can find me also on Twitter at my Twitter handle at Yves Sanford or drop me an email at y.sanford at comdivision.com. Today I'm going to present you some of the newest and most wanted products, VMware vRealize Network Insight. I'm going to cover the basic installation and connectivity and over hopefully the next few days or weeks I'm going to actually show you some of the other interesting features and small snippets of the product like we usually do that on our YouTube channel. And before you actually reach out to me I know that currently it's, it's very hard to get your hands on the product. Um, this is due to some limitations set by VMware. I'm currently actually sitting at VMware headquarters down in Palo Alto and that gave me a wonderful opportunity to get my hands on the product and also to talk to some of the people responsible for the product. But without further say, let me get started and show you how to install the product, which is a pretty simple and straightforward process. The we realize Network Insight instance is actually coming as two OVA files, which you need to download from the VMware homepage. Uh, I put them on a file server. We use the deploy OVF template feature from the vSphere client. You could also use the vSphere web client. You enter all the usual information, name of the VM, sizing configuration, they offer medium and large here. Um, depending on the sizes, you should actually consider the uh, user guide for that. You then pick the cluster you want to deploy. This is, I'm going to use our first and management cluster. You pick a resource pool for the individual workloads. Again, this is a pretty straightforward, normal um, OVA deployment scenario. You pick the data store, then you switch to the appropriate distributed port group. And finally, you enter all the necessary IT in IP information, net mask, gateway information, DNS server list, domain search list, and NDP server list. For the DNS server list, let me give you the same information as we have it in most VMware products. You should only supply a maximum of two DNS servers. Um, if you need more than that, you should definitely consider the documentation for that to check if that's appropriate. NDP servers, we are going to use local ones. I'm not a big fan of using public ones from every little VM because A, it adds traffic and B, um, you should have an internal source. Then it doesn't matter if that's a bit off track. We enter our login site instance as the logging target, and then we hit finish and wait for the deployment to be done. This takes, depending on your storage instance, a few minutes. In my case, it took roughly eight minutes or something like that. It really depends on what you're running onto. If you are running all flash, that's good and faster. Wait for the VM to be started and then you can actually open a browser and directly connect to the web interface. This is pretty similar to many VMware products nowadays. So if you look at VROPS, LogInsight, etc., you always, after the deployment, you just enter a web page. The first one who gets there has the ability to configure the system. I need to enter a license key. I can't show you that one. And then you need to activate um, the system. Activate sounds much more like what it actually is. It just checks the license. The next thing, you need to generate a key pair for the proxy VM, which is going to be used for data collection. And then you can finally deploy the proxy VM. So again, we use the deploy OVA template wizard. We go through the usual procedures, accept the license terms, give the virtual machine an individual name. In this case, this is going to be called VRINI proxy. We collect the appropriate cluster. We then pick the appropriate resource pool, select a data store to put this VM onto, um, define the provisioning type, thick provision as with most monitoring tools is the best solution. Pick the port group, configure all the networking information. You see here you also need to enter the secret um, information for the proxy. That actually also includes all the information for it to connect to the primary VRNI system. So that is also why you shouldn't wonder that you don't need to actually manually enter any information about the primary VRNI system in this configuration. Beside that, everything else is the usual procedure, default gateway, DNS servers, 
And finally, we can also provide our syslog server again, which is log inside in our case. And once all that information is actually um, committed, again, it's like the usual task in IT, we are going to wait for a progress bar to be finished. Once all of that is done, start the VM. This actually took a bit longer for the proxy than it took for the primary VM. And once that's there, it's going to automatically reconnect to your Network Insight system. Open the web page and log in. The default username for the first account is admin at local, and the password is admin. You will be informed that you are running under NSX assessment mode, depending on the license key. Uh, you can also switch in full mode. You can also do that in an evaluation system scenario. Then you pick data sources. This is where you can see if you are in NSX or full mode. In NSX mode, you will only have vCenter server information. You enter all that information, wait for it to be validated, and your system is up and running. Again, this was just the introduction on how to do the basic installation and configuration of it. Um, we are going to cover more of the details on how to use the product at a later point in time. So far, thank you for watching this short video. My name is Yves Sanford. I'm VCDX number 203, and I'm also CEO of the Comdivision Group. You can reach me at Twitter at Yves Sanford is my Twitter handle, or drop me an email at y.sanford at comdivision.com. And I'm going to actually make sure that we provide you with some more VRNI videos in the very, very short future. Thanks for watching and have a good day.